This episode is going to be focused on trim paths. At its base level, trim paths is a simple way to animate lines and icons on and off the screen. But with a few tweaks, you can make some really complex looking animations relatively simply. Let's take a closer look. We're gonna start with a simple circle shape layer. So we'll grab our ellipse shape tool and we'll draw out a circle in the center of our composition. And we can center that up using our align panel. We're also going to twirl down our options. We're going to delete the fill and make sure that our stroke is visible. And we'll probably change the stroke color to something more like blue. And we're going to change the stroke width so we can see it a little bit better. Now to add trim paths to our shape layer, we can either use the add arrow here and go down and select trim paths. Or if you have your selection tool selected in your top toolbar here, you can click the add and then go to trim paths. And when we add trim paths, we can see that it's added into the contents of our shape layer here. And we can twirl down the trim paths to see what we have for options. You can either animate with the start or end position of your trim paths, and depending on which one you choose is gonna determine which direction the path trims itself. In this case, I'm gonna be animating with the end property. So we're gonna go forward about 20 frames, and we're gonna add a keyframe on the end property. Then we can go back to the beginning by hitting home on our keyboard, and we're just gonna put this down to zero. Now when we play this, we see that our path animates on, but it's not very exciting. So to add a little bit more dynamic movement to this, we're also going to add keyframes on our offset. So we're gonna go to the beginning of our timeline and we're gonna add a keyframe on our offset. And we're gonna go forward to our last end keyframe and we're gonna set this keyframe to one. Depending on whether you animate the start or the end property, is gonna determine whether this is a one or a negative one. In this case, I animated the end property, so we go in a positive direction. But if we animated the start property, this would be a negative one. Now let's play this. And that's a little bit more lively and dynamic. We can also select our keyframes and hit F9 on our keyboard to ease them. We can shift them forward just a little bit so we can see how this looks. That's a little bit more exciting. We can also hit Shift F3 on our keyboard and really tweak our easing in the value graph here. And that's much better. Now to animate this off, we can animate our start property. Now we can move forward to about two seconds and add a keyframe on our start property and move forward about 20 frames and we'll change our start to 100. And we will also go back to our first start keyframe and add an offset keyframe. And we will change our offset to two. So it'll do another full rotation as it animates off. We're going to lasso select our keyframes and hit F9 on our keyboard. Now we have a nice circle that animates on and off using the trim path effect. We can change the way that this looks by twirling down our stroke options and changing this from a butt cap to a round cap and that looks a little bit more modern and elegant. Now that we have a cool on and off animation, let's go back to our shape options and see what else we can do to make this a little bit more dynamic. So we're gonna to go to add, and I think we're gonna add a repeater. Now we've used repeaters before, and by default they animate along the X axis. So we're gonna twirl down our transform options for our repeater, and we're just gonna zero out the position. And I think we're gonna adjust the scale. So we're gonna change this to something like 115. Now we have a repeater that's going to grow from the center outwards. And we're going to change the amount of copies until it fills the screen entirely. And I think we want to have this kind of start in the very center. So if we drag our offset in the negative direction until it kind of fills in the center and then just crank up the amount of copies that we have till it fills the screen, that'll give us a cool almost radar type animation. And what we can do, we press U on our keyboard That'll bring up all of our animated keyframes and we can twirl down our ellipse options, twirl down our stroke options, and we can animate the stroke width. So I think we're going to start this at something like 10 and we're going to go forward to our first end keyframe and we're going to crank this up until everything connects. So that would be about 35. We're going to select those and easy ease them. 
And then we're going to go to our circle animates out and we're going to copy and paste these keyframes. And we'll right click on here, go to keyframe assistant and time reverse. So now we have something that can be used as a transition. And if we go to our last stroke width keyframe, we can turn this all the way down to zero. And we can also twirl down our options and go to our repeater and our repeater properties. And we can adjust the rotation too. So we can adjust this to something like 25 degrees. And we get this really cool spiraling animation. And now that we've adjusted that, we need to go in and adjust our stroke width again. So it fills up the entire screen. We'll change this to 45. Go to our next keyframe, change that to 45 as well. And now we have this cool contracting spiral animation. And you can see that it doesn't quite fill the center of the screen if we zoom in really close. So we can go back down to our repeater and we can just change the offset and crank that down until it completely fills in. And again, we just crank up the amount of copies we have until it fills the screen again. 